So here we are in the exhibition room and today I show you the single Fokker grips and we start with this one. This is the control grip of Fokker Sports Plane pre-war 1913, the Fokker M5. This is the airplane from which the Fokker E3 eventually emerged. As you can see, it's a pure steel grip, doesn't even have wooden handles yet. In the center, this switch is the so-called blip switch. This serves the purpose of shutting off the ignition to the engine, to the rotary engine at the time. First grip, Fokker M5. If you're interested in those grips, have a look at our book, Fokker, the development of all control grips from 1911 through 1918. See video description. Oh, and after we have seen grip number one, I'll show you grip number two in the development line of Fokker control grips, which is this one, which was used with a Fokker A1 or B2. Those were the unarmed reconnaissance aircraft of the first war month in late 1914 and early 1915. And since these were unarmed, the grips don't feature any machine gun triggers. Also, they are quite squarish. In the beginning, they were painted, and in the start of the serial production, they were then nickel plated, which was carried on into the first armed monoplanes, the E1, E2, and E3. So, second clip in the row. While the unarmed reconnaissance aircraft made by Fokker, the Fokker A1, B1, and B2, had no machine gun triggers. Those came up with the new armed monoplanes that were able to fire through the revolving arc of the propeller. The triggers themselves were simple sheet metal piece items. They had a hinge on top of the housing of the blip switch, which shut off the engine ignition. A slide at the top was pulling out the Bowden cable, which exited at the rear. Those grips have first been seen in the first armed Fokker monoplanes and have been carried on into the E1s, E2s and subsequently even into the E3s since many E2s have been converted into E3s. And the fourth grip in the development line of Fokker <coughs> aircraft control grips is this one. It was used in the Fokker E3. The major the difference between the earlier ones, obviously, is the circular front scaffold tube. This was done to ease mass production. Also, the wooden handles are now canted, which makes them a bit more comfortable when flying the aircraft for longer times. And the rear tube, this one here, was also reduced from formerly 18 mm to now only 12, making the whole arrangement a bit lighter. The nickel plating on those grips died out since Fokker continued to paint them black rather more for future aircraft. The further production run of the Fokker E3 then saw another changes in the control grip, like seen here. The sliding disc on top to take the Bowden cable was replaced by a sledge which allowed a simple putting in and putting out of the Bowden cable itself. Also, the neck changed from a flattened tube to a conical one. Um, few of these grips can be seen in photographs still nickel plated. Most of them were then painted black like seen here. These grips have constantly been switched at the front and during production so it's hard to tell when what grip was in which airplane. And also keep in mind not only the E3s had those but the other aircraft with single machine guns like the D1 and D2 used them also. Yep, right, we are still in the year 1915 and still dealing with the Fokker monoplanes. The wooden handles are now oval, the triggers are not simple folded steel sheets but deep drawn items. The sledge is for hooking in the Bowden cable, the neck is made from sheet metal and conical. And the whole thing is now only black painted. No nickel plated grips anymore available. And for those of you who are interested in the whole development, our book on the development of control grips, 
is now available as an audiobook. The English version will be available either today or tomorrow on Patreon and the German version is free on YouTube for all to see. So, if you enjoy and want to hear me tell you the whole story of those scripts and their development, tune in there. In 1916, the new, more powerful rotary engine Ober Ozel U3, a double row 14 cylinder uh, of 160 horsepower, became available to Fokker. He decided to try and improve the performance of his monoplanes with it, which did not work out quite well. So he thought, if I can't improve the performance, I improve the firepower and put three guns on it. This was the result the fancy Fokker E4 with three machine guns triggered by one machine gun trigger on the control column grip. It didn't work with the pushrod system, so they went back to two machine guns, slid open the trigger to separately engage machine guns either right or left, and this became the standard for later Fokker fighter planes. Last time I showed you how Fokker tried to improve the firepower of his Fokker E4 by using three machine guns, which have been activated by one trigger. Didn't work, so he returned to two machine guns and for that on his experimental grip he slid open the trigger and created two triggers effectively which could fire each gun independently. And this was of course no nice design, so he changed it again to this, which is a development from the late E3 grip. With two independent triggers. And this remained in service from late summer 1916 with the E4 over the D3 into the summer of 1917 and was used in the first F1s when they came up in August. Fokker's new triplane appeared to be a success, the military wanted it, but what they did not want was the old grip, since from mid to autumn 1917, the military came up with a new regulation according to which any fighter pilot's control grip must have from now on a throttle for the left hand. So they cut open the ring and attached the throttle to the left side. The two triggers remained and this was the first version used in the production of the Fokker triplane as the DR1. First we have those monoplane grips, then those with the double triggers, then the military said we need a throttle for the left hand and even that wasn't good enough yet. So Fokker modified this grip to accommodate the wishes of some of the fighter pilots which wanted to have a trigger more similar to a rifle that they can pull. <laughs> so, so he put this assembly on the back of the grip and had two wires attached to the triggers, so if the lever arm is pulled at the back, both triggers are activated at the same time. It is said that this was a suggestion made by Richthofen. Uh, actually, there's a letter showing that he requested more of a rifle trigger for the hands rather than a push trigger for the thumbs. And this is what the triplane used in serial production. And then there was Rittmeister von Richthofen. And he did not like that grip at all. And the Rittmeister didn't like that grip for several reasons. First, the wooden handles all of a sudden were upright again. They have been canted on the late monoplanes, which was nicer. The throttle stood towards him. So during landing, when he was pulling, was poking his own belly, was not very comfortable. The blip switch in the center was hard to reach by his thumb. So he had the frame cut open, inserted a piece of steel tube in here so that the Main handle was canted again, the throttle was cut up and rotated by 180 degrees and also canted inwards and the blip switch went in the top corner. Now, in idle, the frip wasn't poking his belly again, full throttle forward. He liked that much better, he used this with his 425-17 when he fell in April 1918. And while serial production of the triplane was on its way, the grip was one more time changed. 
This happened between 425.17 in which Richthofen fell and 591.17 flown by Leutnant Edgar Scholz. And the grip then looked like this. And this might have been what Richthofen originally had in mind. Triggers to pull with a finger, much like a rifle. Blip switch, easy to reach by the thumb in the upper corner. And the throttle handle doesn't poke in your belly when you pull during landing. And this kind of grip is confirmed to have been used in the last serial production run of the triplane, the entire production run of the Fokker D6, E5 or D8, and in the early Fokker D7s. That's the last of our description parts for the control grips at Fokker. Yes, this is the final version, with all straight tubes, no bent curves, throttle lever handles on the first examples were a bit longer than the later ones, but they had troubles and ran against the instrument panel, so they cut them in size by 30 millimeters. Ergonomically formed, trigger for the fingers, and the final version was intended for the two-seat reconnaissance airplanes like the Fokker C1. These grips were supposed to become the standard grips for German fighter airplanes, which did not happen since the war ended. And with that, our description of the grips also finds its final part. See you with other topics next time. Make sure to find out all the secrets about the grip development at the Fokker factory during World War I. Go and get yourself a copy of our book on the topic with the German title Alles fest im Griff or All in Good Grip or listen to the audiobook. You can find both on our Patreon page. The link is in the video description too. Don't miss that out.